Today, we are going to be reviewing and comparing the top two gig bags on the market, the Mono Vertigo and the Reunion Blues Continental Voyager. All right, so I've been wanting a new gig bag for a few reasons. The convenience factor is huge for me. Being able to just, you know, put the guitar on my back, sling it over my shoulder, it just makes loading in and out way easier. Also, the extra storage space most of them come with to fit your cables and accessories is really helpful. The lighter weight is obviously nice compared to the hard shell equivalents. And finally, just the universal nature of them, being able to fit, you know, multiple different guitars in the same case. All of those things interest me a lot. And after doing some research, these two seem to be at the top of the pile, but it really wasn't clear which one I should go for, so I figured I'd just compare them myself and take you guys along for the ride. Now that they're both here, uh, we can take a look at them and uh, look at the designs of each, their features, and the build quality. And then after that, I'll go ahead and cover what I like and dislike about each, and finally pick which one I'm gonna keep. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's go ahead and look at the designs of each bag, starting with the mono here. So the uh, most striking um, thing about the design on the outside is this boot feature at the bottom. It's this really nice thick rubber um, <laughs> boot, if you will. Uh, and it's just great because this is a top loading bag, which I'll get into in a second, uh, which basically means the bag is going to be standing upright like this most of the time. Uh, offers great protection, is pretty grippy as well. Uh, the outside material that's used on this feels very durable. It also feels kind of sleek, like if you were to get water on it, the water would just run right off. Um, it's got this massive pocket here on the front. It's got some uh, little mounting points here to add accessories, which I'll mention here in a second. An additional pocket up here. Flip it over. It has uh, backpack handles, which are great, and they can be stowed away in this pocket if you don't want to uh, have these hanging around. Regular handle, nothing crazy there. And then the actual design of the bag. As I mentioned, it's a top loading bag, so you don't lay it flat to put the guitar in. You actually just do this and slide it open and uh, place the guitar inside. Inside, you'll notice it's got this really kind of nice, soft, cushiony material all the way around the sides and on the, uh, the bottom and the top. Uh, it has this neat cradle design, so there's no strap to actually hold the neck in place. Instead, it's got this kind of lifted cradle here and then kind of like a, uh, you know, uh, an inverted cradle, if you will, uh, to, to lock the neck in place, which is neat. Um, it has this protective material right here where the uh, headstock tuners would scrape against the case. And it also has the same protective material here where the bridge would uh, rub against the case as well. And that's about it. It's got some uh, extra cushion on the bottom that's very similar material to this. And uh, yeah, that about covers the uh, design of the mono. So let's switch over to the Reunion Blues. All right, so this case uh, does not have a top pocket. It does have a bottom pocket. Um, it also has these shoulder straps to wear it as a backpack. They can also be stored away. It has a regular handle if you prefer to use that. Um, this is a kind of traditional designed bag, meaning it opens up like this and you just lay the guitar in that way. Uh, you'll notice it has, again, more of a traditional design where you put the neck here and then strap it in like that. It's got some uh, really great plush, um, very soft quilted interior all the way around the edges, just like the mono. And uh, it also has protective material here for the bridge. It's a lot smaller of a contact patch. And then it's got the same thing here uh, where the headstock would hit. So that's the design of each. Um, let's go over features real quick. So really there's not a ton, but the biggest one is just the extra storage capacity they have. So with the uh, Reunion Blues here, it's got actually a smaller pocket up here in the uh, top and that takes up about that much space. And then you have this, which um, it's a pretty stiff material, so it doesn't uh, balloon out too much. But uh, I'll kind of show you, that's kind of as far as it'll go there. Um, but the inside is not massive. However, it does have a lot of additional compartments built in. So you've got obviously this general space here. You've got this little Velcro strap to put cables in, I'm assuming. 
almost lost the case there. <laughs> um, pocket here, you've got a kind of netted pocket here, um, and then you've got a bigger pocket here. So there's a lot of organization built into it, um, but not nearly as much storage space on the other case, which I'll show you here. So this entire thing is one giant pocket. There's no real organization built into it. Um, I'll probably have to do a close up, but maybe you can kind of see that there. Just one giant pocket. There is this little um, netted section that's only about maybe that uh, tall. So there's not a ton you could fit in there. Maybe a pack of strings would, would be uh, small enough to fit in there. So not a lot, but it is just one massive pocket. You could probably fit, you know, a small pedal board in there if you want. It's the material is a lot more pliable, so it'll stretch out more. And then also has an additional pocket up here. Let's see if you guys can see that. So again, just for small little things, you know, picks, ID, maybe strings, that sort of thing. And then uh, kind of the the biggest feature that this has that that doesn't is the ability to hook up what's called a mono calls it a uh, tick accessory, I believe. It's basically a mini backpack to go on here and add even more storage if you want. So that covers the uh, features. Let's go over the build quality. This is a used case. So it does have some wear on it. Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but there's kind of some strings hanging off there. I think up here as well, yeah. So kind of some threads there hanging. Um, but other than that, it looks good. Seems to be holding up pretty well overall. And uh, this case is a brand new case. So it doesn't have any of that. Um, really, I couldn't find any issues with it. Whoops. I couldn't find any issues with it uh, except, and this is very minor nitpicky, but uh, I just noticed that the Velcro here is, um, I don't know if you'll be able to even tell, but it's sewn in kind of crooked. So it's not straight across, it's uh, at a little bit of an angle, but you would probably never notice that unless you're a crazy person like me. So overall build quality, they both feel great. The inside of both are, it's super plush, feels really nice. The outside feels super durable. So they're both really high quality uh, cases overall. Okay, so now that we've overviewed the cases, uh, let's go into some of the things I really like about the Mono Vertigo. So the first and foremost, this boot. I really like the design, I think it's super cool. Um, it just adds a lot of extra protection, and I kind of wish the Reunion Blues had something similar. I'm sure that one has plenty of protection on the bottom, uh, but I just like that feature. I think it's really smart. Uh, another thing I really like is the massive storage space. So you could fit a ton in here. Um, you could fit easily, I would say easily a small pedal board in here without problem. It, it definitely gets uh, wide enough to be able to do that. Any cables you could ever want, uh, you can fit a lot. It's got additional storage up here, which I like. So this is definitely the winner um, if, if carrying a ton of extra gear with you in the guitar case is important. Uh, let's see what else. The inside cushion is very thick, which I like. So it's uh, definitely thicker and a little bit softer. Not the material itself, but it's squishier than what's in the Reunion Blues. So that's nice. I like this cradle design. Uh, I'm not sure if it works better or worse than the traditional strap set up, but I do think it's cool. And uh, let's see what else I had here on my notes. Oh, it's a, it's light, it's lighter weight than this one. So this is, I believe this measured about seven pounds on my scale and that was about eight pounds. So this is a little bit lighter, but it definitely feels lighter. And uh, to that point, it also is just more comfortable to hold and carry around. The handle um, is more comfortable than that one. And I'll get into that in a second and the straps are actually wider, so it feels a lot more comfortable to hold overall. And when you're holding it on your back like a backpack, this sits quite a bit lower, so I'll put on the Reunion Blues here in a second, but uh, just putting this on real quick, you'll notice my head just about covers the, the case. So uh, it fits really well. This is, I'm, I'm six foot, so this is kind of, I guess I'm kind of average. Um, if when I go over to that case, you'll notice the difference. It sits way higher. So I like how comfortable this one is to hold and uh, how it sits a little bit lower. And uh, the last thing I guess I'll say, well, two things. Uh, Mono is a brand that most musicians trust. A lot of people use their gear. So it's kind of a, a brand, to, you know, you feel comfortable uh, 
with uh, holding your really expensive guitars. So I like that. And then I also really like how tight it holds the guitar once it's inside. So the guitar doesn't really wiggle or move around. It really just hugs the, the horns on the ES-335s, for example. So that's the mono vertigo. Those are the things I like. Now let's cover the things I don't like so much about the case. And uh, we'll start with this giant pocket. I love how much you can fit in here, but I don't like how there's really no attempt to um, give you any sort of organization. So there's no additional pockets in there that are really useful. If you want to separate, say you wanted to put some pedals in here and cables, it's all going to be smashing together. Anything you put in here is just going to smash um, into each other, which isn't ideal. So I don't really love that. Another thing I don't really like about this case is the design. The uh, the main thing about the case, it's just not, not my favorite. Um, and I'll show you why. So this is gonna be a little tricky standing up, you know, with it on a table here versus on the floor, but hopefully we'll be able to illustrate kind of the issue I have with it. So first, you'll notice that this zipper actually goes lower than this zipper, which means you're really supposed to put in the guitar at an angle um, on this side. So no, traditionally this would be resting against your leg. You'd use your left hand to kind of hold this open, but it doesn't actually open up that wide. You'll notice there's not a ton of space for the guitar to slide in here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a guitar and kind of demonstrate when I put in the guitar what happens. So we'll grab my beautiful ES-345 in this stunning frost blue color. Now I'm gonna be quiet and see if you, hopefully the mic will pick up uh, the sound of me putting this guitar in the case. So I hope the mic picked that up, but it is just scraping against the case the entire way in. So the bridge is scraping against this protective material right here the entire way in. Uh, the back of the guitar will hit this uh, zipper here. The guitar is rubbing against the case and there's really no way to, to do it without that. I know I'm it's a little clumsy with it on a table like this, but take my word for it, on the ground, there's no way to put it in without it causing some sort of issue. So, you know, I've got it resting against my body here, my left hand holding the case out. I put the guitar in. It's very tight, so it's gonna be rubbing against stuff whenever it's put in. So that's uh, not ideal, not something I, I love. It's gonna damage the case eventually. The guitar could get damaged, um, potentially. I just don't love that. I wish it opened up a little bit more to be able to fit uh, the guitar a bit easier without having to rub against stuff the whole way. So it's kind of the blessing and curse of it being really a tight fit when it's inside, but uh, to get it in, it means it's a tight fit. So it, it's gonna be rubbing against stuff. Another thing I don't really like is uh, the cradle design's cool, However, this suffers from the same problem my uh, Mono M80 dual electric bag does. And that is, it uh, actually rests against the uh, bottom of the case, the, the back of the headstock. So the headstock is not actually floating when it's inside this case. Um, it might be if it's vertical like this, but when it's actually flat on the ground, uh, it is resting against the back of the case. I'm gonna take the guitar out and again, listen to how it sounds when I take the guitar out. Some nice little scraping noises there, but uh, the headstock, I'm not sure if you noticed this, is actually hitting this tag right here. So it's rubbing against this tag and it's not a soft material. It's definitely one of the more abrasive materials where this tag is. So I could definitely see it actually um, damaging the back of your headstock eventually. Now this is, again, everything I'm saying is, is not gonna be you know, in a year. It's gonna take a while for this to happen, but it could happen. So I think it's worth mentioning. So it's gonna be rubbing against that. And I just don't like that. I would prefer this to be a little bit taller, the case to be a little bit thicker, to be able to get the back of the headstock off of the uh, bottom of the case, especially for a Gibson. You just want it to be floating. I just think most people would, would prefer that. Um, other things I don't really like. So this uh, material here, protective material here, and then on the inside, um, it doesn't feel and look as durable as what's on the Reunion Blues. And uh, I can actually see uh, that this already has wear on it from uh, from someone else. So there's already some wear here from the headstock and there's already some wear here from the uh, bridge saddle just scraping against this every time you take the uh, guitar in and out of the case. So that's not great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ES-330 to kind of show 
exaggerated version of that problem. So this guitar has a Bigsby, as you can see. And when you're not using the Bigsby, you have it in this position. And I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it's got kind of a point on the end there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guitar in the case. You'll notice how tight it is. I could literally let go and uh, show you, there's not anywhere <laughs> for it to open more. So it barely fits. So I finally squeeze it in, it goes into the guitar or into the case, excuse me. And uh, what you're hearing and why it's so tight is that Bigsby is just scraping against this protective material here. I have no doubt that if you have a guitar with a Bigsby similar to this guitar, um, it is gonna tear through this protective material very quickly. I think within a year of regular use, I would bet it would cause serious damage to this and potentially ruin the case. So not a big fan of that. Okay, I think that just about covers the things I don't like about this mono case. Let's switch over to the uh, Reunion Blues. If I get the guitar out. Okay, so for the Reunion Blues, the things I like about the case, um, I do like, this doesn't have as big of a storage compartment, but I do like that it's a lot more organized. So I feel like I can really separate the things I would normally um, bring in a guitar case, like strings, like um, cables, various cables. I could have it all separated and uh, not all jumbled together. So I do like that. Uh, the actual material on this case feels really, really durable. It's more coarse than the uh, mono here. And it just feels stiffer overall. The actual skeleton of the case right here, this is a lot firmer. So I can't really uh, move it around too much. If I were to try and like squeeze it and bend it, it's, it's tough. It feels very, very stiff. Now, if I switch over to the mono, and I guess I'll do that real quick, uh, you'll notice you'll notice the difference in the stiffness. So if I go ahead and just move this around, you'll see this is way, way, way looser, um, or maybe loose isn't the right word, but it's just a lot more malleable. And it's uh, thicker, the, the walls here are thicker, but um, there's just not a lot of strength on the kind of skeleton of the case. So I could easily move stuff around. So let's go back to Reunion Blues. So overall, this case just feels like a tank. It feels really, really solid. Even in comparison to the model, this just feels like another level of protection. Uh, some other things I really like about it. So mainly the inside. <laughs> Um, it's very plush and nice. I, I, I really like this design and uh, I like this protective material here. It feels more durable than what's on the mono. It feels again, coarser and just kind of stronger. So I would think that this would actually um, last better than the monos. And also the traditional design means it's going to last better. If you have, you know, if you're putting a guitar in this way, then you're not wearing it, you know, rubbing the guitar against this every single time you put it in and out. It's barely going to be touching this um, and it's barely going to be rubbing against it. So I think this is just a better solution for me personally, um, just the traditional design. I like the idea of that, but I think in practice, this just makes a lot more sense. And the same goes for up here. I also like the cradle for the neck here. Um, there's something about having a mechanical connection holding the neck in place that I kind of prefer uh, I don't know if this works better or worse than the really neat design on the mono, but you know, if I'm putting a guitar in here, it feels very secure when I, when I, you know, lock it in place like that. And uh, I guess I'll go grab a guitar and do that right now. And of course this guitar just looks awesome in this case. So the cradle holds the neck really, really well. And if I lock it in place, it's not going anywhere. It's super solid in there. And another thing I really like about this case is uh, the headroom around the headstock. So this one does float the headstock above the uh, bottom of the case, which is awesome. So it's not touching anything the headstock on the side of the tuning pegs, uh, above the headstock, um, behind the headstock, it's not touching anything. Yeah, just overall, it's the stiffness uh, that I really like in this case. It feels very, very solid and uh, something I could trust with a expensive semi-hollow guitar like this. And uh, finally, I guess the price. So I really like the price of this. This is um, cost me $177 out the door. The mono was 250. So uh, 
yeah, there it's a pretty big difference in price between these two. So this is definitely more affordable. All right, so now let's go over the things I don't like about this case. So first is I wish it had more storage. I wish it had storage up here. I really like that little compartment up there. I use that a lot in my other cases. So I wish it had that. Um, I do not like, let's see if I could close it here. I do not like this handle. Um, I think this handle is terrible. <laughs> Uh, this was definitely, I think, a case of form over function. It's got this piping on the uh, sides of it, this blue piping, and it is rock solid. It has no give to it at all. So when you're holding a heavy guitar and lifting this case, it feels very uncomfortable. I don't know why uh, they did it that way, but this handle just feels terrible, in my opinion. And uh, speaking of terrible handles, the Mono has a traditional kind of vertical handle, which is great. I use all the time to just move the case around. This does not, it does have this, but it's incredibly tight to fit your fingers under here and it's just not a good way to, to lift the case. It does not feel comfortable at all. I wish it just had a standard uh, you know, vertical handle there. And uh, continuing on to uh, you know, straps I don't like. So these are pretty cushiony, but they're a lot thinner than the Mono. I prefer the wider um, straps on the Mono. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this guitar on my back to show you what I was saying earlier about how tall this sits. So you'll, uh, if you remember, the mono was basically covered by the back of my head. However, I have to actually step back to fit the entire uh, case in the frame. So it is way taller. I have to go all the way back here. Again, I'm six foot, so uh, walking into a doorway it's close. I actually thought I was going to hit. All right. And again, I am six foot and this is just a, a normal doorway. I'm going to back in and see if I hit. Okay. So I don't know if you could tell, but I am literally, if I shrug my shoulders, I'm hitting the uh, door jam there. If I lean, I'm hitting it. So yeah, if you're any taller than six foot, uh, you're probably going to need to duck going through doorways, which is kind of a bummer. I will say um, that it uh, actually feels better, kind of the, just the way it sits. It feels, the, the mono feels like it sits really low. This feels better to hold, but I, I just don't, don't like how tall it is. It just kind of makes you nervous. You're going to smack the guitar. You know, it's kind of like uh, driving my truck. It's lifted into a parking garage. I'm always afraid it's going to hit. And uh, yeah, it's just... Not a big fan of that. And another thing I don't really like about this case is how it's just a little too oversized. So obviously this is made for a semi-hollow guitar like this. So this kind of should be the exact guitar they you know, built it with um, in mind. However, you'll notice there's a lot of room here on the sides of the horns. Even when it's closed, um, you still get all of this gap space. Um, whereas the mono kind of fits in more like this to where it's really snug in there. So I kind of wish both of them were like, that one was a little looser and this one's a little tighter. I think about there would be really nice. But yeah, this is, I mean, a full size Gibson. And uh, yeah, it's just a little too loose. It, it, it moves around a little bit more than I would like. I uh, just wish it was a little bit tighter. I think because the cushions are skinnier versus the mono, that maybe that's part of it as well. If the cushions were just a little bit thicker, I think it would just hold it that much better. All right, so those are the things I like and dislike about the Continental Voyager. Okay, so now the final question, which case should you go with? Well, I think both are super nice, but overall for me, I feel like the Reunion Blues Continental Voyager, it's just a little bit of a better bag. It feels stronger, feels tougher, and the traditional design where you lay it flat on the ground and open it that way, I just think it works better. Top loading is super cool in theory, but in practice, I just think there's no way it won't lead to damaging the guitar eventually or prematurely wearing the case, especially with a Bigsby guitar like my ES330. The storage space on the Voyager is plenty for what I'd use it for, and I really prefer the headstock floating versus resting on the bottom of the case. And finally, at over $70 cheaper at the time of filming, it really just cements the decision for me to recommend the Continental Voyager. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful and informative to you guys. Uh, if you like honest and balanced real gear reviews, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to catch the next one. All right, see ya.